you in person. And uh, as I said before, I enjoyed your show, The Independence, and I'm, I'm sorry that you're not showing it anymore because I thought it was a great addition to Fox Business News. Thank you very much. And Kennedy is a very good show, and I recommend people go check that out. Excellent. So we were going to talk about uh, foreign policy. I think the most important question in foreign policy is war and peace. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question that I like to focus on is this one. Do you have a principle that permits you to determine when we should go to war and when we should not? Um, I think it's, I personally am not what you would describe as a philosophically based person. Right? So I don't walk around adhering my brain to a principle that can be summed up. You know, I, I, don't, I don't use the, the uh, I don't use some kind of uh, ten-word axiom to determine what that is. So, on one sense, the answer is no. Um, my general feeling uh, has been for a long time now that. Uh, we're just way too promiscuous in this country uh, to use military intervention as kind of a first or ever presence uh, option. We don't, it's, uh, I liken it a little bit to like, I mean, there's no reason why Saudi Arabia shouldn't be sustaining casualties on behalf of shared interests that we theoretically might have somewhere in the universe, right? Uh, so I feel like we've, we're way overextended that it's helping to bankrupt the country um, that it creates all kinds of moral hazard problems, moral, moral problems. Um, I am probably more interventionist than your average libertarian. Um, there are some libertarians for whom anti-war is just, it, it is, the non-aggression principle is the most axiomatic thing in their life. I get it, I'm not that person. Um, but uh, I am a, I'm a hell of a lot less interventionist than certainly 99% of people who've made speeches at this conference. Well, I, I guess uh, Saudi Arabia has, uh, in my view, even more interest in uh, fighting ISIS because they're in their neighborhood and they're a problem for them. But exactly. Uh, my question was, do you think that the fact that so many people are, like yourself, uh, who don't have a specific principle that permits them to have guidance of when to go to war and when not to, could that be one of the root causes of why we are so promiscuous in all these wars and we're getting involved in all these wars willy-nilly uh, for contradictory reasons? Sometimes, you know, we go for war for this reason, other times we don't, et cetera. Maybe, maybe. Um, I, think, I think the biggest problem lies in the amorphousness of the term national interest. National interest is in the eye of every beholder. I mean, on some level, you only go to war if you're attacked, period. Uh, and, and there aren't, shouldn't be uh, many, if any, uh, exceptions to that rule. And that's, that's a pretty uh, hard and fast way of looking at it. But the United States, since the late 19th century, has taken this role of you know, uh, trying to be the hegemon uh, to replace the British Empire and you know, keeping the world safe for democracy and shipping lanes and all that kind of crap. And, uh, and as a result, we, we cannot imagine a world in which we are not playing the lead role in adjudicating all disputes. And that is going to, by definition, throw you in these places. So yeah, maybe if people um, had a one-line bumper sticker kind of principle to go from, that could help. But I think you would always trip up against the concept of what is and is not national interest. John Bolton defines the national interest much differently than other people do. I mean, the, you can easily make a case that a national interest, we have a national interest not to allow the, you know, the terrorist supporting expansionist skullduggerist ayatollahs of Iran to have a nuclear weapon. You can make that case. I don't necessarily agree with that case, but you can make that case because the term national interest is, is elastic. And I don't think that you're going to get anywhere uh, in America, um, ultimately, like in a broad kind of political way, to try to reduce everyone's um, way of thinking about this in non-aggression principles. I just Americans are not philosophically based, we're pragmatically based. So how do you win a pragmatic argument against us? You can root some of it in philosophy, and, and that's very attractive. Um, you can root, I mean, we have an existing constitution that should be you know, pretty axiomatic about when we go to war and when we don't, and that's been utterly disregarded and abused since 1942. I mean, we haven't had a congressionally declared war, ultimately, 
since 1942. Uh, and so, like, so we already have some principles like that, but the... Well, the yeah, we have, uh, the Constitution says that we should use force in the common defense of the states. It doesn't yes. say anything about national interests, it doesn't say anything about combating evil, it doesn't say anything about maintaining world peace. So, uh, I mean, how about that principle of if we're attacked or there's an imminent threat of an attack, then we go to war, otherwise we don't. Sounds like a... That's the principle, I think, that's implied in the Constitution. I uh, agree with that that is the principle implied in the Constitution. And then, so the follow-up question is, how come that didn't work? Well, because of the amount of lawlessness in uh, president after president, and Obama's taken it to a new high, where the Constitution